Hello everybody, I welcome you all to today's video. In today's video, we are going to see the top 10 potential PhD topics for a biotech industry oriented PhD. So if you're somebody who wants to do PhD and you want to enter the industry after doing PhD and not the academics and you want your PhD topic to be industry oriented, then this video is definitely for you. In this video, we are going to talk about the different topics and how it's going to help in the industry scale for you. I'm Dr. Vaishali, Academic Specialist at Biotechnica. Biotechnica is a space that helps you or guides you in anything and everything regarding your bioscience career. And this video is sponsored by Biotechnica. Come, let's explore the topic. Yes, so the first topic that you're going to see is development of novel biotherapeutics for the treatment of cancer right so these days we are um, you know the cancer is really uh, increasing and yes if you are able to create a therapeutical uh, treatment for cancer then it's uh, definitely a very good uh, it's definitely a very good area so this is majorly for if you want to enter the the pharmaceutical industry or the medical research so this particular topic is definitely for you. So the second topic that we're going to see is the investigating the mechanisms of antibiotic resistance in bacterial pathogens. If you've come across the term AMR, right? Antimicrobial resistance. So you know that there are these super bugs where, you know, the, uh, the, resistance of the microbes are really increasing against these bacterial pathogens and they are not effective anymore against the against the uh, disease so that is the reason uh, you know the 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 antibiotic resistance is definitely picking up these days so if you are somebody who are who is interested in microbiology then this is one topic that you can take up as your research work Next, the third topic that we're going to talk about is exploring the use of exploring the use of gene editing technologies for disease treatment and prevention. So gene editing technologies here, so they talk about different technologies that help you to manipulate a gene, right? Say, for example, CRISPR, CRISPR-Cas gene. So such gene technologies that can help in, uh, you know, in preventing uh, the treatment or preventing the disease from the gene editing perspective. That is, you're going to edit the gene that is already there in the human system and you're going to replace that particular gene so that, you know, the disease can be treated effectively. So that is one. The fourth topic that we are going to see is designing sustainable and scalable bioprocess for the production of bio-based chemicals and materials, right? So here, obviously, you have, a, you know, bioprocess technology that is there. So definitely, it is a big thing in the industries, right? For example, if you are, uh, you know, if in, in bioprocess, exactly what happens is you have to convert the you know the lab scale uh, by process that you do into an industry scale so here um, you know optimization and scale up is definitely necessary so yes designing a scalable bioprocess for production of any bio-based chemicals or materials say for example it is citric acid or it is ethanol or any commercially uh, important uh, bio-based chemical or materials if you're able to come up with optimization and uh, you know production as well as scaling up of that particular material then yes it's a very good topic for you to take up Third, the fifth topic that we're going to talk is investigating the role of microbiome in the human health and diseases. So here as well as you can see clearly, it is for those of you who are interested in microbiology. So here what you'll be learning is various microbiological techniques which help you in uh, realizing or investigating the role of these microbes in human health and diseases. So this uh, is mostly a basic research that you can see, right? So uh, here you can, you can do, uh, you know, it's not an application-based 
research, but it is a basic research. So if you're good at microbiology or if you are interested in microbiology and also human health, then this is one topic that you can take up. Now, the sixth topic that we have for you is developing computational tools, computational tools and algorithms for the analysis of large biological data, right? So today, because of Human Genome Project, right, we have a lot of biological data with us, say it's the sequences or say it is the 3D structure of proteins or any of the such data, even relationship between proteins and uh, molecules drug discovery so all of these we have a lot of data that is there so if you're able to so if you're somebody who's interested in bioinformatics and computers as well as biology then you can uh, look at developing computational tools and algorithms for analyzing these large scale biological data or we can also call it big data right so this is one uh, upcoming uh, field that you can think about now, the seventh topic that we have for you is investigating the potential of stem cells, right, for stem cells for uh, tissue regeneration and uh, tissue engineering and regenerative medicines, the use of stem cells, right. So, uh, here, what do we mean by regenerative medicine is when you're able to use stem cells for replacing the diseased cell. So replacing a diseased cell with a healthy cell with the help of stem cells. So this is what regenerative medicine is. So if you're somebody who's interested in immunology and about human health, then this is one topic that you can take that is investing the potential of stem cells for tissue engineering as well as regenerative medicine, right? The next, the eighth topic that we have for you is developing new methods for drug discovery and development using machine learning as well as artificial intelligence. So here, what we mean by this is nothing but CADD. CADD stands for Computer Assisted Drug Discovery, right? So here you use advanced methodologies such as ML, that's machine learning, as well as artificial intelligence. You can also use, uh, you know, ANN, that is artificial neural network. So all of these techniques where the machine is going to learn by itself, right? So you're going to give a few data points to the machine. And for example, it's a relationship between, say, a disease and a protein. For example, if one protein is going to increase, then say the disease, you know, there's a possibility of the disease to happen. So so then you give such data to the machine and the machine will form a relationship between these data and you then give a few more data for it to validate itself, right? So you have the result for those data, but then you do not give the result, you just give the input and then you see whether it's giving the right output or not. So if it is giving the right put, that right output, that means the machine has learned itself. So after this, you can experiment, that is, you can give unknown data and then you can find what the result might be. So that is how you develop new methods for drug discovery and development. So this also involves a lot of bioinformatics and computational biology. So the next topic that we have for you is studying the mechanism of plant microbe interaction and their potential application in agriculture and biotechnology, right? So if you're somebody who likes plant biotechnology, who likes to work with agriculture and you want to be uh, associated with an agricultural industry, then you can take up studies like this, that is you study the plant and the microbe interaction, right? So we know that a lot of microorganisms are involved in plant growth and these plant growth also help in the, uh, you know, microbe uh, you know, uh, microorganism growth. So that is how you study the mechanism and the interaction between the microbe and the plant and how you can use it in agriculture for the benefit of farmers to increase the yield or to produce disease resistant crops or to produce a, you know, a higher variety, higher quality of plants to reduce the, you know, use of pesticides. So all of these, you know, different uh, qualities can be introduced into uh, you know a crop and that is where the application of biotechnology in agriculture comes into play right so next the 10th and the last topic that I that i have for you guys is exploring the use of biomaterials and biodegradable plastics in medical and environmental applications 
so here specially what is biomaterials so biomaterials is a combination of different fields right you have medical fields physics chemistry as well as biology so it is a culmination of all of these uh, you know various fields is what is biomaterial so biomaterial is you know um, a material that is uh, being produced or a substance that is being produced uh, using a few techniques and it will be associated with a human body or a biological uh, you know use where it's put into biological use for example these days you have uh, biodegradable stents that is coming up right so such things so if you want to uh, especially work in the biomedical field then yes this particular uh, you know topic will be useful for you that is use of biomaterials and biodegradable plastics in medical and environmental applications so biomaterial is mostly as we talked about the biomedical application however this biodegradable plastics will be for the environmental application so this itself is two different topics right so if you're somebody who's interested in the environment and the health of environment etc so then this particular topic is for you with this we come to the end of this uh, discussion i'm sure it was super helpful for all those of you who are looking to enter the industry after completing your phd thank you so much and see you all until next video bye